In an industry stuffed with marketing bullshit, empty promises, and shiny suited liars, one woman's had enough. She knows what it's like to have the wrong clients, no money, and no time for fun. But she also knows how to fix it. And on the Business for Superheroes show, she promises to tell the down and dirty truth about business, sales, and running away with the circus. Here's your host, Vicki Fraser. Hello and welcome to the Business for Superheroes show. I'm Vicky Fraser. This is Joe Fraser. And the panting that you can hear in the background <laughs> is um, Bronson and Koenig, our two little sheep. <laughs> so this might be a slightly chaotic podcast. <laughs> we're, um, we're recording in the garden, um, optimistically thinking everything's going to be fine. Um, but the sheep... It's, this is really interesting to them. ...have other ideas. Yeah. So um, we're also... This is also on YouTube, so... <laughs> If you want to see sheepy noses, and uh, I'm just going to turn you around actually so that you can see. Oh, it's just oh they're just running. They're just running now. So, uh, so yeah, but you can see in the garden we are surrounded by chickens and tiny sheep who are in varying states of misbehaviour. Hey, can it come say hello? Hello. If you can, <laughs> yeah. So look on YouTube. If you can hear that panting, that's Kernick being very excitable. Mm. Yeah. I just got a mouthful of sheep goo. <laughs> <laughs> right, so this, uh, um, <laughs> this might be a short podcast. This might be a short podcast. This week we are um, we are answering questions again, aren't we, Joe? We, we are. Well, we're trying to. Yes, we are. <laughs> Can it's come for a cuddle? Right, Joe. What's the first question? Um, Okay, I don't, I don't know who this came from, I but came from um, the question reads, I'm self-employed, but I don't sell a product. I sell my services. I'm a tutor slash super nanny slash parenting guru. So I am limited to what I can physically do by the hours in a day. Um, is writing a book a good idea for me? Uh, just a moment of doubt as you often refer to products. Right, well... Yes, is the short answer to that. You can you can write a book and should write a book, whatever business you're in. Um, I would say it's actually easier to, well, on the face of it, on the surface of it, it's easier to write a book if you are a service provider rather than a product seller. Okay. Um, because you, so so let's let's take let's take your example specifically. You're a super nanny parenting guru t- tutor mm-hmm. that I can think off the top of my head of probably 10 things that you could write a book about on that subject so you could write a book about um, education yeah how to educate children the best way to educate children on a variety of subjects so you know you could have 10 different books on 10 different specific subject areas I don't mm-hmm. know what your subject area is um, with super nanny parenting guru stuff you could talk about child behavior you can talk about play you can talk about um building and building relationships you can talk about um <laughs> you could talk you know you could talk about any any number you could talk about discipline and you know reward and punishment and, and that kind of thing there's there's a million things that you can write a book about that people will desperately want to read hmm. how, to, think, how to raise a kind child to, yeah. would be nice how to raise a kind child um how to yeah why you know why children scream in supermarkets why children scream on planes there's you know, any of those things can lead to a whole bunch of topics for a book. So yes, absolutely. What, what would be, what would be the point of writing that book, though? Um, well, the, because I, I guess as a as a service provider, there's only so many hours in the day that you can provide that service. Oh, I see what you mean. Yes, I see what she means now. She, mm. he, maybe he. he she. Um, yeah. So the the point of writing a book will be to elevate yourself as the expert in your industry so then you can charge more you know if you can charge more you can do less and earn more money which is you know (laughs) hello everybody wants to do that presumably Uh, you can also develop products and services from your book that's one of the great things about writing a book is that you don't just end up with a book that you can sell you can take that book and turn it into other products and services or use it as a lead-in like a course yeah so even though you can't physically you know tutor or super nanny Mm, larger and larger Large, numbers of people or... yeah that you can um create a course for parents mm-hmm. you know how can parents become i don't know karma and there's a million things you a million, know, thing, how, million things that parents yeah. want to know how can you how can you help your child do their homework and you know i can think of courses bazillion things how, how to cook with your child mm. not to cook with your child yeah don't don't, don't eat children <laughs> Bad. um 
also you could you could start training other parenting gurus or tutors yeah you could you could start a, a nannying school yeah if you wished and do that either virtually or in real life or via events or whatever but you're by writing the book you're raising your profile aren't you you're saying yeah i'm i'm not you know i've, I've got things to say and I'm, I'm not just another tutor i'm not just another nanny yeah, I'm, I'm yeah up at the top of the game yeah and honestly writing a book will open doors for you that you didn't even know were there so you know even you asking this question you know i'm limited to what i can physically do by the hours what could to me there's an underlying question there what more can i do Mm. because you know i I have the same problem i can only write so many books for clients so what else do i do i teach people how to write books there's it will open doors for you that you don't even know are there at the moment and it might spark off even just writing the book might spark off a whole load of ideas that's happened to loads of my students um it's happened to mike it's happened to jill it's happened to a bunch of it's happened to dom yeah it's happened to a bunch of other people that they've, they've just thought hang on a minute you know, the, the idea that I've been writing about here or the information that I've been writing about here has sparked off this idea and I can do that as well. So it's, it's very cool. It's very exciting. There's a, there's, a lot more, there's a lot more to writing a book than just writing the book. And it, it, it as well, it, 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 will, it will form part of your education because you will research and you will learn and you will think about things perhaps a bit more deeply than you would do if you were, you know, changing nappies and chasing kids around a garden. Yeah. Um, so it will... By virtue of writing the book yourself, you, you'll end up you'll learn um, loads more, more of an expert yourself. Yeah, you'll learn loads, loads more. Not, I mean, sure, you're very much an expert anyway, but you'll learn even more. You know, you'll become more of an expert. And you'll learn a lot about yourself as well and a, a lot about other topics as you as you write about them. I've, I've learned a lot about um, the traditional publishing industry that I didn't know about through virtue of writing my book because I had to go out and find out about it. I'm, I'm an indie publisher. I, that's what I help people do. Um, but... I need to be. I need to understand the traditional publishing industry you as well. You need to be able to talk about it and, and know it. Yeah. Yeah. So I've gone out and I've learned a lot about the traditional publishing industry. I'm still learning a lot, and I wouldn't have done so, I don't think, had I not written this book. Hmm. So, so yeah. I hope that's answered your question. Um, don't know whether it has or not. Joe, what's the next question? The next question is uh, my. Well, it's not really a question. It's a statement, but it does demand an answer. Really, hmm. uh, my biggest challenge is writing a book and being judged on it when it's published. Hmm. Well, yeah, you're going to be judged on it. I'm afraid. I've just been bitten by a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Ow! You look edible, Joe. Well, I suppose it's worth a test. Was it Mavis? It was Mavis. It was Mavis, Mavis Peacock. Peacock. <laughs> um, you can tell Mavis is Mavis. They all look a little bit the same. Um, because she makes this kind of... You will have heard her. She makes this kind of... She, sound, she sounds, sounds like, like a, a... a car horn. Yeah. But like a lorry horn. Um, anyway, so, yeah. Right. Being, being judged on... Yeah. Judged on your book. You're going to be judged on your book. <laughs> it's scary. The, the trick is to selectively care about it. Now, I'm not saying that you are... That I, I care very much what people think of me. I care far too much what people think of me. We were talking about this just mm, earlier, weren't we? today, yeah. At lunch, having lunch. And I would love to just not give a shit what anybody thinks of me other than the important people, but I do. I'm extremely sensitive. And I think a lot of the people who I attract into my world are also extremely sensitive. So I would imagine that the person who asked that question is probably quite sensitive as well. And by the way, there is nothing wrong with that because that makes me better at what I do. If you're sensitive if you're able to tap into other people's emotions and feelings and you feel things very deeply yourself it means that you're going to be more empathetic and you're going to understand you're going to be able to understand people more easily i think (laughs) joe is yeah that was failing to catch a chicken (laughs) yeah she looks absolutely outraged um i'm not surprised so yeah the trick is the trick is to care selectively and not allow it to not allow it to stop you and certainly don't allow the fear of being judged to stop you from writing your book, because that would be a real shame. But it is, it is, a, thing, it is a thing that deserves consideration, isn't it? Yeah. When, when you've got... Uh, sorry, hello, sheep here. When, when you're putting all your thoughts and feelings and, and knowledge and skills out there, mm. you know, people are going to read it, and, and yeah. they will judge you. But if you, put, if you write a good book, and you put your effort into it, and you're true, and you don't, um, you know, you're not making it up, yeah, not just pulling it out of your and bum. Then people will judge you well and judge you fairly. And that's yeah, good. and remember as well, this is what my first mentor, Peter, told me. Um, hi, Peter. Hi, Peter. Um, some people will love you, some people will hate you, so what? Hmm. And another thing that I got from him is that what other people think of me is none of my business. Um, much easier much easier said than done, I know. Stop pushing the chickens. 
<laughs> Much easier said than done. <laughs> But if you can kind of, inter the more you say things like that to yourself, the more you say, some people are going to like me, some people are going to hate me, so what? And the more you say to yourself, it's none of my business what other people think of me, the more you will start to believe it. Because mm -hmm. our thoughts become reality. You know, what we, what we believe about ourselves becomes reality. If right. you're constantly telling yourself that you're crap and you're awful and you're not good enough, that's what you're going to believe about yourself. And once that belief is there, that's, that's what mm. you become. If, you, if you're constantly telling yourself that, you know, you are good at what you do, you are worthwhile and all the rest of it, then you, you are going to believe that. And that's, that's, what, that's what you will... This is going to sound really woo, but it's, you attract to yourself, to a certain extent, what you put out there. And if what you put out there is a lack of confidence, then you will get back from people a lack of trust. Hmm. And if you, if you focus on the negative, then all you, all you will see is negative. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, you, you, you generally get strong, positive, happy, you know, good reviews of your, of your books. Yeah. I would imagine that somewhere out there, there's a, there's a bad one. I haven't found it yet, but I would imagine, I'm a, I would imagine that some people who have read my book have absolutely hated it or have just not liked it or have not felt anything. And as Ooh. long as I keep that to themselves, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, as I said, I've been lucky enough not to have any negative reviews of it, of my first book. My second book is not out there yet. Um, but when I put when I put my new book out, I'm going to be absolutely terrified because I'm I'm going to be putting a lot of effort into launching it as widely as possible, and I'm going to get people who, you know, who think it's shit, and probably some of those people are going to tell me, mm. and that's going to that's going to upset me. I know it is. I know that I'll be crying on Joe's on Joe's shoulder at some point because of something that somebody said. But I also know that I won't let it bother me for more than about an hour, mm. and then I'll be like, well, you know what? Screw those people. Screw those people. Here is a really good tip that I got from Brené Brown, who is one of my favourite people. I think if I were ever to meet her, I would frighten her and she would back away into a bush like Homer Simpson does um, because I just think that she's amazing. Um, but in her book, Daring Greatly, which you should absolutely read if you haven't already, um, she talks about the post-it note technique. I don't know if I've just made her... <laughs> you've been pecked on the butt. <laughs> I've been pecked on the ankle. Oh, OK. Um... So yeah, she she does this thing, and I have I have two post-it <laughs> I have two post-it notes. <laughs> Hi chickens. It's really, I have a slight aside. Our chickens are absolutely obsessed with feet. Don't know why. We don't know why, but they just they will sit there and peck your feet for ten minutes, and who knows why. And, and not be embarrassed about it. Yeah, they give no shits. Um, <laughs> Joe is once again picking up Peggy. Hey Peggy. Hi, hi Peggy. Say hi. Stand on the knee. So this is, this is another point which is great for radio, this is. Ah, Jesus. She's been having a dust bath and now there's dust in my gym. Okay. Right, so the post-it note technique. Hi, Peggy. This is, this is great video. Go and watch the YouTube video. I'm Vicky Fraser. This is my chicken. This is my chicken. So yeah, post-it notes. What I do, and I got this from Brenny Brown, is I have two post-it notes, and on them, uh, one of them is for personal, one of them is for business. Uh, for the business one, I have written on there the names of all the people whose opinions I genuinely care about. So if, if for example, one of my mentors is on there, um, Peter Thompson. Hi, Peter. Hi, Peter. And... You know, one of my one of my clients, or, you know, a couple of my clients are on there, and um, like my buddy Dom, hi Dom, um, is on there, and my buddy Mark, and so they're the people who, if I got something negative from them, that would make me think, huh, they've probably got a point. I want to, and rather than kind of take it personally and be a little upset, I'd be like, right, I need to go and talk to them and find out what it is that, you know, what what sparked that and why they thought that. If I get a negative comment that upsets me from somebody whose name is not on that, not on that post-it note, why do I care? They're, they're not important people. They're not somebody who is important enough to me for their name to be on that post-it note. Therefore, why does their opinion... Why am I letting their opinion get to me? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? I think that's fair. And you, you've got a, another post-it note for personal stuff. Yeah, for personal stuff. So, like, my, I've got my, you know, friend, family, best friends. For example, you know, I, I love, obviously love my parents. Their names are not on my business post-it note. They, they, I mean, they think everything I do is ace anyway because, you know, they're... Blank, blinkered <laughs> they're biased but they don't know anything about running a business so their names wouldn't be on that post-it note but they're most definitely on my personal post-it note you know because I get on really well with my parents Joe's on there a couple of my best friends are on there anybody else who says something that upsets me you know it's, it's like okay that's that's fine not everybody is going to like me and mm. 
I can deal um, with if that. You, if you got a hundred random strangers telling you the same thing, you might have something yeah. that needs looking at. Yeah. You know, you, maybe. 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 I, would, I would say if a hundred people tell you the same thing, there's probably a bit of an issue there. Um, but, but randomers on the internet going, oh, I didn't like this very much. Then it's, it's fine. You can't please everybody. You know, mind. It's, it's fine. So if, if you're worried, if you're letting the fear of being judged on writing a book stop you from writing a book, please don't. I just remembered you had a randomer contact you and say, I thought your book was very interesting, but you swear too much. You should stop that. Yeah. And my reaction was, <laughs> hmm, OK, thanks. Thanks for your feedback. Bye. Nope. Um, and, you know, that's, that's, that. that's not exactly what she said, actually. She went on to tell me how I had been dragged up by poor parents and how I was going to hell. Mm. So oh. that was fun. Yeah, that was nice. Yeah, she was, she was a proper piece of work, that one. Um, but I think, I think it's, it's, a, it's a really good idea, isn't it? Um, yeah. Deciding in advance who the people are whose criticism you are going to listen to. Which is why, by the, That's good. Which is why it's a really good idea to have your team of beta readers because they're people whose feedback you have explicitly asked for. And when you get it, you can you can know that it's been given to you with kindness and love mm. and that they want to help you. And that, that means that even if you do get something you don't agree with and that is negative, you can say, you know what, that's fine. I actually don't agree with this piece of feedback. That's okay. I still appreciate them giving it because it's valuable. Mm. But it's not like it comes from some random that you're letting get into your head. Yeah. Because you, you don't, don't let random people into your head. And don't dwell on on the negativity but most importantly don't let that fear of being judged stop you from doing the things that could lift you to greatness because that would that's a real tragedy it i I shudder to think how many wonderful things aren't made or created because the creator is too afraid to to do it and put it out there that's it's sad and so feel the fear and do it anyway and know that if you surround yourself with the right people they will shield you from that negative criticism you know, every, every time you get a piece of negative criticism that upsets you, go and find three pieces of positive criticism that make you feel better because it will be there. Yeah. It will be there. Yeah. Um, how long have we been going for, Joe? I have no idea. Let's have a look. 16 minutes. Okay. We've got time for another question. Um, this is from Charles. Okay, Charles Bud asks, is there any point in trying to get traditionally published? Well, it very much depends on what your aims and goals are, hmm. really. I would say for most business owners, the answer to that is no. For most small business owners, if you are somebody like Tony Robbins or Oprah Winfrey, um, you're no longer a small business owner. Charles Charles Budd is a pen name for Oprah Winfrey. Then we'd like to interview you. (laughs) Come on the podcast. (laughs) That would be so cool. I would love to interview Oprah Winfrey. Maybe I should ask her. Maybe you should. All she can say is no. Anyway, is there any point getting traditionally published? For most people who are like me, small business owners, no, I would say. And the reason is it's really hard, really, really hard to even get a foot in the door. You need an agent, you need a book proposal. Writing a book proposal is a little bit like writing a book. It's like a 40-page document and it's there's a, a format for it. And you will spend an awful lot of time, energy and investment in getting published. Yeah. And whilst that might result in, in you know, marvellous futures... Maybe. Maybe. It probably won't. No, because the problem is, and, you know, there's a lot about the traditional publishing industry that I love, because without the traditional publishing industry, I probably wouldn't be doing what I do right now. Um, But times have changed, and no longer do you have to rely on being accepted by some kind of a gatekeeper who decides what's worth publishing and what isn't. And what they mean by that is not, not even whether it's good or not, but whether they think it's marketable or not. Mm. And that's because they market books based on what, you know, based on their parameters, they're not interested. I also, they're not interested in your well-being. I don't think that's entirely true. Um, but their main concern is not your well-being and your future. Their main concern is their profit margins. It has to be. Yes, they're, they're running. Business. They're running a business. They're running a business. So they're not going to have your best interests at heart. And if they think that your book is going to be less interesting to a mass public and bookshops, traditional bookshops, than somebody else's book, they're going to ignore your book. And you know, none of their marketing dollars are going to go on you. They're going to go on the other people you know if you have the misfortune to to be in the same publishing house as, as a big author who's just about to release a new book in an area that's vaguely near your area you're screwed you know that your your book will will disappear and even worse than that is that the whole point of signing you know signing on with a traditional publisher the contract is that they you get the advance because they've bought the rights to your book you don't own it anymore you have no creative control over the cover or the, even the title you might have a bit of input depending on how much sway you have um but you certainly don't have any... You don't own the book anymore. Once it's published, they, you don't get to reissue it. You don't get to sell it yourself. You don't get to do anything with it. 
Um, so you lose all, con- all creative control over it. And I don't think that most authors realise that. Hmm. I don't think they realise what it means. Unless you are J.K. Rowling or Stephen King or Tony Robbins or Oprah Winfrey, you're not going to get a say in what happens to that book. And if they decide it's not worth marketing, it's going to go in the bargain bin and there's nothing you can do about it. And you can't sell it through your own website. They will not let you do that. Hmm. Unless you, I don't know, manage to magic them into doing it. Unless you are Oprah Winfrey or... Yeah, well, I mean, they're going to sell anyway. But yeah. So, yeah, so think very, very carefully. Because the other thing is that most book advances, are, you know, they're, they're small, less than 10 grand usually. That's not a lot of money. It's less than I charge to go write a book, <laughs> mm. just, to give you a, just to give you a clue, much less. So, so yeah, it's, the advance that you get will be relatively small unless you're very lucky. And if you don't sell, you know, if you don't sell all of the copies of the book, that's what it is, it's an advance of royalties, you will never get any more royalties from that book. So that, you know, you can expect royalty checks to come rolling in. No, not, not unless they market your book and push your book for you. You're also expected to do a lot of the marketing yourself, which makes you think, what is a traditional publisher doing for me? So I think that publishing, self-publishing used to be sneered at by sneery people as vanity publishing. I think the new vanity publishing is traditional publishing hmm. because that's, that's the thing that's supposed to hold all the kudos. My question to you is, what do you want your book to do for you? If, if you want the kudos of being traditionally published, absolutely go for it. I've got no problem with you trying to do that at all. You know, it's, it's great. As I said, there are certainly places for traditional, traditional publishing. But if your goal is to write a book that's going to help you position yourself and grow your business and open doors for you that you wouldn't otherwise have and be a lead generator, a really good high, you know, thing that will qualify, highly qualify leads as to whether they're going to be a good fit for you, traditionally, you don't want to go traditionally published. You want to have complete control over all the marketing, over everything to do with it, and you want to be able to bring people into your world via your book. Hmm. Again, you're not going to be able to do that through traditional publishing because it will go into bookshops and things, which sounds great, but you don't get to capture any of that information. If you're selling your book through your website or through other means or giving it away, you get, contr- you get, you get to know who's buying it and then you get to keep contacting them, and that's the key thing. So I think that's given pros and cons of, of both I mean I the, the, so, yeah. the cons of the cons of indie publishing and I, I like to say independent publishing rather than self-publishing um, is that yeah it's, it's going to be more of an upfront cost to you because the, the publisher takes the risk in traditional publishing mm-hmm. that's what the advance is they are paying you they are doing all of the editing also you get a really good editor with traditional publishing that's guaranteed you'll, you'll sure. get that editor their, their vision might not gel with your vision which is another thing to bear in mind yeah you're not going to have complete creative control you're not. Um, and, you know, editors do know what they're doing. The, the editors in big publishing houses are very, very good at what they do. And if you've got somebody like that to work with you, you'd be really, really lucky. But the flip side of it is you're, you're not going to be able to necessarily put your message out there. Um, with self-publishing, which uh, indie publishing, um, you have to bear all the cost of everything. So, you know, if you're writing it yourself, you'll need to pay a proofreader and an editor if you're going to have one. You'll need to pay uh, the printer. You'll need to pay the designer to design the cover. Um, you need to do all the marketing yourself. Well, you need to do all the marketing yourself, really, anyway. Whether you, you know, again, unless you're a massive name. So there are pros and cons to both. But if you do the marketing of your book right, you'll be able to get back most of those costs with the first print run. Yeah. Because you'll be able to pre-sell. That's what I did with my first book. I sold a hundred copies of my first book before I'd even finished writing it, and that paid for the print run. I'm going to do the same thing this time the, as well. The print run of. Uh, I think I printed like five hundred for the okay. first time round. Um, yeah, more than paid for the print run and probably paid for the cover design as well. I'm going to do exactly the same thing for this book. I'm going to sell it before it's finished or before it's printed. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to, you know, well, my, my aim is to sell enough to more than cover all of my outgoings. So It wouldn't cover your time, though, which I guess a pr- traditional publishing house might. Well, that's what, the ad- that's what the advance is for with the traditional publishing house. It's called an advance on royalties, which is technically what it is. But that it, the idea is that you get the advance in order to give you the time and space, so you can stop. If you're if you're working a day job, the idea is that it gives you enough money to stop working the day job for enough time to write the book, hmm. uh, which I don't think in reality for most people is enough, to be honest. No. So. I don't might, might keep you in beans on toast, but. Yeah. So yeah, there's pros and cons to both, and it really very much depends on what you want to get out of writing a book and publishing a book. So I hope that's answered your question, Charles. Um, I think that's probably enough for this week, isn't it? Probably is. It's all calmed down now. Well, that's normally not not a good sign when it comes to sheep loose in your back garden. Oh, I can see that, although Koenig is um, looking very accusingly down into the courtyard, and I'm wondering if Bronson is in my flowers. Could be. Could Could be. be. Picard is over where my new office is going to be. Oh, yeah, that's a bit of dingle news. Mm. Let's give you a bit of dingle news. So today we've been in Evesham, Worcestershire, mm-hmm. 
talking to Kiops. Who are a nice little company who make uh, log cabins. And we are building a log cabin in our garden. In fact, we're building it just... <laughs> this is a great radio again. We're building it just down there. If you can just see Picard. Oh. <laughs> and I feel bad now because Bronson's being a good boy down there. Look. And it's gonna, that's where my office is going to be. And it's going to be a dedicated office. And I'm so excited about it. It's going to be cool. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. And I don't know if you can hear that gentle panting. But that's the sound of Kernick enjoying an ear rub. Joe, let's, let's show the radio audience. Oh, oh he's got to move. Oh. There he goes. <laughs> so I think that's probably enough random rambling for this week. I apologise for the chaos of this week's podcast but I hope you've enjoyed hearing the chickens shrieking and <laughs> Joe shrieking and the sheep heavy breathing at you <laughs> I've enjoyed it I've enjoyed it it's nice yeah um, right we'll be back same time next week God only know. knows what we'll be talking about or where we'll be yeah I don't know maybe book launches yeah because so that will spur me on to get on with it we're getting really close to going to Breaking Bread in Portugal oh we are are there any spare seats left is there a space if anybody really wants to get in? There, actually, yeah, there is, if you wanted to. If somebody really wanted to, they yeah. could contact us and they could get on. Yeah, if you, if, you would, if you feel a burning desire to come to Portugal, and you absolutely bloody should, um, it's going to be ace. It's going to be Joe and Berto in short shorts. Short shorts. Serving us slices of lemon and grapes. <laughs> Don't make that face. <laughs> it's going to be me and Misty, and I like how I put that as the first benefit. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best bit. Yeah. It's going to be me and Misty with our giant planet-sized brains helping you to bust through your business challenges and mm -hmm. um, issues and it's going to be spending time with a group of really really cool business owners uh, including a top a-list copywriter from the states and she really is an a-list copywriter as well and I feel very lucky to know I'm not yeah. met her in person yet I've spoken to her you know virtually so many times and that's gonna be cool yeah I'm really looking forward to that um, and She's bringing her husband, who is the grappa guy. Um, he is a, a, a grappa expert, which just makes me chuckle because nobody likes grappa. That sounds, <laughs> sounds really bad. And there is one of my clients who is amazing. She is the most incredible businesswoman. Uh, she started. She started when she when she was younger. She got divorced and used the money. She had such a bad experience with her solicitor that she used the money from her divorce to train as a solicitor and now owns eight law firms. She's amazing. She is inspirational. She is incredible. And it's going to be such a great weekend. And then we've got a couple of other ladies coming as well. Uh, dog behaviour expert, which is going to be fantastic. So that's a different perspective on a different type of business. And a marketing consultant uh, who, again, will bring another different perspective. She wants to do something completely new because her business is grinding her into the ground. And that's the kind of thing that Misty and I excel at, is looking at, OK, so you don't want to be doing what you're doing. How are we going to pivot your business? Mm. How are we going to do something new? This is not some, um, you know, 500 people in an auditorium with someone talking at the front. This is this is up close and personal with a handful of really interesting people. Yeah, it is. It's tiny. And the people who have come before have got such good feedback. Have You know, they said it's been life-changing and they've loved every second of it. And, you know, we've loved every second of it as well. It's always really good fun, isn't We've it? seen some sunsets. We've yeah. drunk some wine. We've had it's a really nice time. Really good. We have. Really good fun. So if you would like to come, go to breakingbreadmastermind.com or email vicky at vickyfraser.com and uh, let's let's talk. We'll have a chat, see if we're a good fit and uh, yeah, I'd love to see you in Portugal. Excellent. Yeah. So next week we'll talk about something to do with books. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you... Carrie! Hi, Carrie! Hi, Carrie. I hope that well, by now you should have received your little gift. <laughs> for listening to every single one of our podcasts. If Congratulations. You, yes. You You're lunatic. officially nuts. If you have listened to every single one of our podcasts, do drop me an email, vicky at vickyfraser.com, and let me know because I've got a little something to send you as a thank you gift. Um, you can wear it with pride and look out for other <laughs> lunatics. Uh, remember to send me your postal address so I can send it to you. Uh, if you haven't reviewed us and rated us on iTunes, please, please go and give us five stars. It helps people find us and it also makes Joe feel good about himself. It does. It really does. It really does. And, yeah. Oh, if you've got any questions, if you've got any questions at all about books or book writing or publishing or writing in general, please send them to me and we will answer them on the podcast. We will. We will. Right. I'm off. That's it. We're done. Have a splendid weekend, everyone, and we'll be back same time next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
Like what you've just heard? Tell your colleagues. Tell your friends. Send them to www.businessforsuperheroes.com slash podcast.